not happy. Oh, what is it now? I'm quite interested to hear about the first people who do things, you know, like the, the first people who climb Mount Everest or run a four minute mile or uh, design a robot that can walk or uh, prove mathematically that something is the case. These people further the boundaries of human achievement and they pave the way for others to, to achieve um, in their uh, following them. Now, that's great. And I think it's, it's right that we make statues of these people and, and we record their achievements because they've done something that's worth rewarding and acknowledging and celebrating. They've done something for the first time. Well done then. I'm very considerably less interested, bordering on totally uninterested, frankly, in the second or third or fourth person to do a thing. Whoop de doo. You know, um, Ed Edmund Hillary and Sherpa Tenzing, they climbed Mount Everest and they showed that it was possible and they found a way to do it. And perhaps they made a few mistakes whilst doing it. And they then, there was a milestone in human achievement. There you go. Now the highest peak on Earth has been climbed. Terrific. Now, of course, a while later, somebody else climbs. But they had the benefit. I mean, for a start, they knew the thing was possible because they knew it had been done already. And when you're trying to do something knowing that it's possible, that's a massive advantage. I think you've got to acknowledge that. And of course, they could learn from um, the mistakes of those who went before. They could um, avoid those pitfalls and they could also copy the things that went right. So it's a great deal easier to do something for the second time. And there are many examples. Roger Bannister, he ran the four minute mile. A lot of people have said it was impossible before he did it. And then almost immediately after he did it, within weeks, several other people had done it as well. Knowing that it's possible is a massive advantage. Um, now, in fact, you probably don't know the name of the second uh, person to run a four minute mile. And um, I'm sort of moderately glad that that's perhaps the case because it's not really significant. It's the first person who gets there who shows the world what humans can do. Now, there is another way, however, that people can claim a bit of glory for themselves. They can say, ah, uh, I wasn't the first person to get to the top of Everest, but I was the first, I was the first ginger-haired man to conquer Everest. Hey, you see? What you do is you, you define for yourself a, a subgroup of humanity, and you say that you were the first of that subgroup. But of course, no matter who you are, you're a member of some subgroup. This, for instance, this video I'm making now, is the first video on YouTube on this particular task by a man in a sort of rust-coloured jumper and a beard. There you go. You see, if I define a subgroup that's specific enough, I will be the first. Huzzah! There you go. It's the first video on YouTube with those caveats that I mentioned before. Another thing you can do is not only could you um, allow yourself to use the word first, which otherwise you wouldn't because you weren't the first, uh, but also you can, you can make it look as though somehow you were doing it not for yourself, but for some group that you have set yourself up as representing. Do, I don't know if you suffered that embarrassing speech that Halle Berry made when she won the Oscar, but oh boy, she was saying, oh, this, is, this award is so much bigger than me. Oh, uh, this, this award has, has opened the door to... No, it hasn't opened the door to anything, Halle Berry. No, I'm sorry, it hasn't. Um, <clears throat> lots of, of, of uh, people of various races have won Oscars before you. Uh, Hattie McDaniel for Gone with the Wind, she won an Oscar in the 1940s, and I think you'll find she was pretty dark-skinned. Uh, Sidney Poitier, Whoopi Goldberg had won Oscars before you. You hadn't paved the way, you hadn't opened the door for anyone. In fact, you had, uh, really, I, I, would, I would suggest that perhaps the door had always been open. It's just that no one happened to have won an Oscar who had dark skin. Not that you, Halle Berry, have very dark skin. Um, you know, uh, uh, saying that um, you are doing it for another group of people. Ah, oh, I'm now the hero of this new group. I am not representing myself. You say, no, no, it, it's just self-aggrandizement. Um, do you know, Hallie, I, I'm pretty convinced, you know, that um, whatever color that your skin, or whatever race you considered yourself to, uh, to, to represent or be a part of, you'd actually would quite like to have won an Oscar anyway, wouldn't you? You wanted to be a film actress, why? For yourself, because it's a you know a glamorous, high status, and very highly paid thing to be. And if you are a Hollywood actress, of course you're going to want to win an Oscar, and you're going to want to you're going to want to win an Oscar for yourself, aren't you? Don't tell us after you've won that you would you were doing it for somebody else. No, you weren't. You were doing it for yourself. Those people who climbed Everest, I don't care. Oh, I'm the first left-handed ginger-haired person with with only one big toe to climb Mount Everest. You're not doing it to represent that group of people. You're doing it for yourself because you wanted to. And well done. Congratulations. I'm very happy for you. Climb Mount Everest. But don't, don't call yourself the first and don't pretend you were doing it for somebody else.